as we get closer than halfway to Christmas. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. As the lessons were read today, you can sense there is a little more upbeat tone in the service. Isaiah calls out, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. St. Paul says, rejoice always. The psalmist says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Third Sunday, how many of you grew up when the, the color was purple? Yeah, it was purple, yeah. I don't know who decided blue, but I like blue, and it certainly looks nice in our sanctuary. But always the third Sunday, purple would be one different color. It was pink. <laughs> exactly, it was always pink. You can't get a light blue candle. I don't know. They haven't figured out how to do that with blue. But it was literally called Godet. It's French. It literally means rejoice. Today is a day from all the heavy and the weightiness and the darkness of God. To suddenly say in the midst of all this, there's a reason to rejoice. For the biblical writers, the time of waiting is almost over. And that means God's action is about to begin. It is also true for us as we get closer to the Christmas finish line. It is in sight. And that means it's time for us to kick into high gear. And it means I'm beginning to go through my Christmas checklist. And I know when the deadline is if I want to get Christmas cards to people on the mainland. And when it is to get packages out. And I know who I still need to buy presents for. And what most important when I'm married to, I don't have a clue. <laughs> And I also know that if you have to order something from the mainland, hoping it'll be here for the 24th, you do believe in Christmas miracles. <laughs> and it is very easy for us to somehow, during this last part of Advent, to have our Christmas spirit turn into a Christmas sprint as the finish line gets closer in sight. And we begin to bear down on that finish line. And as we do, we hear the words of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You all have been with me long enough. What is the Hebrew word for spirit? Spirit. Ruach. <laughs> Ruach. In a break. And he almost, the Hebrew, you've got to almost. <laughs> it literally means breath. Life. In the beginning, God takes the dirt and he <laughs> ruachs into it. And as he ruachs into it, it comes to. Life, that spirit, that breath, that word is now <laughs> blowing upon the prophet Isaiah. And it isn't just upon him. The Greek, the Hebrew word would be much more, it enters into him. It is almost as if God is giving Isaiah divine CPR <laughs> and bringing him back to life. But when God brings him back to life, it is always with a purpose. And it is, he has chosen. Or he has anointed. Jump with me. You know these words. What is the Greek? <laughs> Messiah. <laughs> or Christ. He has breathed in me to be the chosen one. The one and the reason he has chosen, the purpose, is so that I may proclaim different tense of the word Ruach, now what went is <laughs> literally what is happening in this text. Isaiah is exhaling what he inhaled. He inhaled this word of God, this breath that brings life, that creates, that gives hope. And as he begins to inhale that word, it goes into the center of his being. Then that is the word he begins to exhale. Let me brag on our church for a minute. Now, I don't brag often, but I'm going to brag on our church. I think our congregation, Lahui Lutheran Church, is one of the best exhaling congregations I have ever seen in my entire life. We, we do. I'm sorry, and it's a sin, and I know it's a sin, and I'll have a confession later on for all that. <laughs> the love we share, and not just to one another, but to your neighbors, and to people you don't even like, and to people from the mainland who are here just for one service, and we say, but for this one service, you are a member of the Hui Lutheran Church, and that's the love and the care that we show. We exhale so well as we make 400 mobile munchies every week. 
We exhale so well as we send quilts around the world. We exhale as we give holiday dinners, not just at Thanksgiving and not just at Christmas, all year long. We do such a great job exhaling as we say to our youth, you got to get yourself to Detroit or Dallas or wherever we're going. <laughs> and you have to hear what's happening in this national church of ours. And the list goes on and on and on. But here's the danger. If we only exhale, and we never inhale, you end up exhausted, with no breath, and with no life inside. So today, the joy of this day, is we are invited for a moment to inhale deeply, before we go back out there and continue to exhale so wonderfully. And what is it that Isaiah says that is here today for us to inhale, to bring into the center of our being? And he says it is the good news. Greek. What is the Greek? Good news. You know this word. <laughs> Evangelical. <laughs> it is the good news. Martin Luther did not want us to be called Lutheran. He says that's an abomination. <laughs> You do not follow me. I am a sinful man. It is crazy. Don't ever call yourself the Lutheran Church. He wanted us to be called the Evangelical Church. We are the good news church. What is the good news that Isaiah says we need to breathe in, that somehow begins to give us CPR when we're running towards the end, and it seems like we're dying on the vine? Old Testament, Isaiah, the people have come back. It has been 120 years they've lived in exile. 120 years. And it's really not the people of Israel that come back. They have lived there over six generations. And what used to be a foreign land is now my home. And what used to be foreign people are now my people. And when the prophet says, it's time, God's taking you back home, they end up saying, no, nah, this is my home. And Isaiah says, only a remnant. Ask the Dorcas Society what a remnant is. <laughs> it is the leftovers after you've used up all the good stuff. It is the frayed, the stuff that's not enough to really make a whole anything. And it is this remnant that comes home. And as they come home, they see their temple is in ruins. Their homes are destroyed. The land is desolate. It will not produce crops. And their life is not even a shadow of the distant memories they had been told about. And it's to these people Jesus, or that, that Isaiah comes and says, inhale this good news. And as we enter this house of worship filled with shadows, failed expectations, knowing that the way of the world is not enough, and yet not fully knowing this kingdom of God either, the prophet says, inhale, here is the good news. I don't expect you to know this. But the Hebrew for good news. Bazar. B-A-S-A-R. Bazar. The ancient original. And what's interesting is you go way, way back to the very earliest, right at Abraham. Bazar literally is a verb, and it's a noun. The noun of Bazar is flesh. Not in a bad sense, flesh you bad. Oh, I know. It had something to do with sex. I don't know what, but I knew as a kid it had something to do with sex. It had nothing to do with that. In the very best sense of creation, what God created is good. You may not think so, but this body is good. <laughs> I don't know what it is, what it is. But it is because it is created by God and in this image of God. And this flesh, that becomes the noun. The verb part of Bezart is to rub until it's smooth. The good news is, God has entered into our flesh, into our being, and he enters in to put his hands all over us. We are getting a full body massage from the divine Lord as he continues to work every muscle and sinew and every part of our life. And he does it with this purpose so that somehow or another, you and I can end up with a hand rub finish. Our rejoicing comes not because of what Christmas is, but because of what Christmas does, as this word continues to enter in and rub us. When Christy and Angel were small, they would come home from preschool. There was a problem on the playground. There was always a fight. They were not fair, and I treated one better than the other. Nah, 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 nah. It was just a miserable time. Every kid has them now. 
And then we would tuck them into bed. And then I would sit there and I would tuck them into bed. They would explain how terrible the world was and that, 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 and all those other things. And then just before, after I listened to this whole litany of, I give them a kiss. And I would say, but you know, I still love you. And then I would tickle them. And then if I would tickle them, they would protest. No, no, Daddy, don't. I don't feel like laughing. I don't want to laugh. It is wrong to laugh right now. Stop it. And I would not. <laughs> Until you would begin to hear this. <laughs> that would begin to come from underneath the covers. And in that laughter, what I heard was, and I hope what they heard was, I'm still here. You're still here. The love we share is here. And that will be enough. That's the rejoicing of today. This God comes and he enters into our world and he begins to work his hands as he strokes away the hurt and the anger, the resentment, the disappointment. And as he works on us, he says, they will not crush you. Not because they're not real. Not because they aren't a part of your life. But because my word is more real. And then he comes and he begins to rub the weightiness of life. Its demands and its oppressiveness. Its sin and self-centered ways. Its fears and its failures. And soothing them, he begins to heal and bring wholeness. Forgiving. Renewing. As Israel looks at the ruins around them, they saw what was stopping them from living the love of the life of this God. And as we look around this day, we can see all the things that stop us from living the life of God. Enslaved, possessed, captive, limiting us. And in the midst of that reality, this word, this breath, frees this bazaar. And the hand of God is all over us, refoking us, seeing beyond what stops us from living, to seeing this God who now opens our lives to each other and to Him. Inhale that word. Breathe it deep. It needs to be the center of your life. And then after you take that deep breath, listen. From the hurt, the brokenness, the sorrow of this world, you will hear a young child giggling beneath the covers before sleep. And in that laughter, hear the truth. No matter what, your God is still here. His love is for you, and it will be enough. And in that word, rejoice. Rejoice always.